Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of our Playbook webinar series. Today, we are going to be talking about first steps to an omni-channel strategy. My name is Allison Zisco, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Home Accents Today. And today, I am with Mary Liz Curtin, who many of you may know is the owner of um, the specialty store Leon and Lulu in Clawson, Michigan, which in addition to having a wide array of home decor and gift items, also has a wine shop and a restaurant and a greeting card store. And we also have Logan Avedon, who is the Director of Buyer Services for Key Accounts for IMC, and Gerald Lee, who recently joined the sales and marketing team at Abigail's. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for having thank us. You. Happy to be here. <laughs> and thank you all for, um, attendees for joining us as well and for listening. If you have questions throughout the program, you can put them in the chat and we will address them. So as I mentioned, today's webinar is about first steps to an omni-channel strategy. An omni-channel is a word that's used very often, sometimes seems much more complicated than it really is. Um, the way we look at it is it's simply <laughs> the numerous touch points that you have with consumers um, or with your customers, I should say whether that's by email, by direct marketing, e-blast, social media, and so forth. So in order to get started, um, let's start with you, Mary Liz. Let's, can you tell us a little bit about your multi-channel platform strategy? Now, I know that in the past, you have been quite honest and said that your e-commerce has not been, with the exception of the pandemic period, has not been particularly robust, but that you've had success in other channels like e-blasts and videos and so forth. Can you share a little bit more information about that? Absolutely. We, uh, of course, like everybody else, wanted to be online marketers by golly, and we were going to do it. So we have three times made expensive forays into selling online. The first, first two times were abysmal failures. And the third time during the pandemic, we figured out how to do it and how to make it work with our inventory system, which was the biggest problem for us is how to have two channels shopping out of the same pot was a little bit difficult. And we did fulfill a lot of things during Chris, during the shutdown. And we've had a wonderful weekend because we just sent a gift guide. But part of what we learned is we every merchant, any kind, retail, wholesale, whatever, has to define what she sells. And what we sell isn't really all the stuff that we have here. We sell sofas, custom upholstery and case goods and clothing and books and games and toys. And we've got everything from a racing rat for 50 cents up to you know, a piece of vintage something where people go, holy Moses, is that expensive? But what we really sell is the experience of coming to Leon and Lulu. We're 15,000 square feet in the main store, another 8,300 next door. We include a restaurant, we have a wine shop, we have a destination marketplace. And part of the fun of buying from us is shopping in the store. And one of the problems with shopping online is you can buy online, but you can't really shop online. If I know I wear white kids in a size eight, I mean, not size six, of course, I know that I can find those and I can price shop them online. But if I'm looking for a new pair of sneakers, I can't do that online. I can't try them on. I can't have somebody tell me whether they fit or not. I can't try a size bigger or smaller. So it's a different kind of experience. And we've discovered that our customers come for a, to us for the experience as well as the product. Yesterday, we had an artist market. We have 25 local artists in our store. And by the way, we are inventoried. Over inventory is our style. We had 25 artists in here on top of our regular stuff. We hired a circus performer, a stilt walker, to come and complicate things just a little bit more. <laughs> and our customers had a fabulous time. But we had a great day. He was juggling and throwing stuff around and it was tremendous. And that's something I cannot duplicate online. However, I can remind you to come to the store online. Our email marketing is our number one way to get our customers to come back in for our events, our special sales, all the stuff that we do. But we are very much event oriented. And by event, I don't necessarily mean a markdown event, a fashion show, a party, a dog adoption all things that are community-based more than more than dollar-based. And you mentioned you communicate with your customers through various 
um, marketing channels, right? You do you use absolutely. We do we do TikToks. We do we of course have a robust fa- Facebook presence. We're on where we do it all. Any way we can make it easy and fun for our customers, but we're really really careful before we blast anything or post it. The number one rule is don't do it unless you have something to say. We Excellent. never send an email that just says, hey, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> we send an email that tells them something fun. And our, our goal is to give them something that'll help them change their lives and make them laugh. That's awesome. Gerald, we were, when we were speaking earlier, you mentioned that you love to coordinate your, um, your e-blasts with your social media and that you can see how they complement um, one another. Can you share a little bit more information about that? Absolutely. You yes. know, traditionally, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you can, you can take it and run with it. No, go ahead. We have time for okay. both of you. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we have found, we recently, and again, I apologize, I'm under the weather, so excuse my voice because it's out. Um, we recently brought social media back in house. and. Uh, we are a family, um, family run company in business over 38 years. So while we have like a global footprint, we are somewhat of a small company. And in doing that and bringing that back in house and coordinating our email blasts with our social media, we have a uh, return on investment um, insofar as orders and kind of the keeping it consistent, the repetition. And kind of like to Mary Liz's point about sending, making sure there's, that it's quality content, that you're not just kind of blowing up someone's email just so they see Abigail's, you know, come across their screen. Because eventually, it's, we talked about this earlier, like every 30 seconds you click on an email and if there's, you know, nothing worthwhile, you add up those 30 seconds, and, you know, an hour, 20 minutes that so quickly. So we do try to keep it, you know, quality focused. And like I said, um, when we do keep it consistent with our email blasts and social media, creating the, you know, aesthetically pleasing content, that's also, we try to keep consistent on our website as well. Um, It's interesting and fun for me to go and look at the data and see what's working, what's not, and utilizing, making sure we're taking in the data that is accessible to us through the different digital mediums. Um, and what did, what did we do right here? What did we do wrong here? Um, how can we use this information to go forward? So I don't know if that kind of speaks to that or not. It does. Do you, can you think of an example, a recent example of um, something that really dovetailed particularly well for you? Well, we recently had a container arrive and kind of like a little collage <clears throat> of what, hit, you know, what arrived on the container. And we sent the email blast out and all of a sudden we're getting phone calls and it was so funny. I'm like, wait, you, you open the email? She's, and it was so funny. You know, sometimes that email blast works, sometimes they don't. Well, this one did. And then we're having other people call, hey, I can't find these glasses on the website that we're seeing on Instagram, you know? Um, and that was, you know, we are a wholesale company. We do have a retail site for places where we might not have a store in that area. We have a store locator on our website so that you can easily find what you know retail shops carry Abigail's products. Um, but that was you know just kind of like a logistical thing about logging in when they couldn't find it. But it's so nice to hear that feedback. That and, instant, yeah. Right, and um, it kind of feeds on itself, the momentum and kind of like I mentioned earlier, it's so fun, this industry, I feel, and so there's a lot of support, and the creativity is contagious, and wanting to learn and help each other, and so, again, I'm very thankful to be a part of this, this webinar, and the series that y'all are, y'all have started, in. <coughs> excuse me, um, so it's just, I find that the if you have like an all-encompassing platform for your website, we use Shopify. They, Abigail's recently switched to Shopify, I think about four years ago. And a lot of these platforms do have, you know, third-party relationships where you can track data, whether it's through Constant Contact or Instagram or Pinterest or 
and then you know the orders on your website. So the the nerd, the dork in me loves the the strategy and the data in in that way, and seeing it all kind of come to fruition. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we'll you know when we first first started talking this. about multimedia, I remember the days when there was a magazine called Advertising Age, and it was all about how you advertise in print print journal print media, what you do with it. They changed their name to what is it? Multi channel marketing now. That advertising fun. age. And there was a theory many years ago that you had three channels of distribution. You had the store, you had the web, you had the catalog, assuming you were rich and you could make a catalog. And then all of a sudden it became clear that if you sent the catalog, I would sit in the bathroom, choose what I wanted, order it online. I might go online, see something interesting, pick it up in the store. And we discovered that it's not three separate channels you have one one mission, you have one business that you're promoting, and you're promoting it in three different places. And more now that social media has so many different platforms. So one of the most important things is to make sure that your message and your look and your whole image is consistent across every single platform. And the best use of your time, of course, is to try to come up with a post that you can smack on TikTok, you can run it through the through Facebook, you can dump it on Instagram, and then you can jigger it up a little bit and put it right on the old uh, constant contact or whatever email program you use and link it back to all of those things. But you have to remember, it's one business, it's one image, it's one story. You just want to make that go everywhere. Kind of like the cranberry sauce I dropped on my porch the other night at 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. No, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. And, um, I do think print media is still like, you know, the catalogs all that are still very important. And in a recent webinar that I was a part of, they were saying that's one thing that retailers are requesting, you know, that please don't do away with your hard copy catalog. You know, that's one thing that reps and um, retailers are wanting more of. So to that point, we are working on a, on a new catalog for 2023. So everybody keep your eyes open for that. Um, but no, I agree, Mary Liz, like keeping, creating awareness and keep it consistent and maintaining the integrity of your product and the service that you provide throughout all channels. So, and yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait to get my hands on some of that primary sauce and some experience. Um, <laughs> the amazing thing y'all are getting there. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Yeah. No, I think you both bring up a very valid point, and that was something that was mentioned actually in our social media webinar um, a couple of editions ago about the incredible importance of being consistent from one platform to another. And as Mary Liz said, you're one brand or one company, and that people, your your customers or your consumers, see that brand um, across all these platforms in the same interchangeable way. So Logan, you um, you work with, as with as director of buyer services for IMC. You work with wholesale customers. Um, tell us a little bit about the platforms that you use to reach and work with your with your clients, and and what is working particularly well for you, and and conversely, what is challenging. Yeah, of course. So of course, IMC is a little bit different than the fact that we don't have a product that we sell or transact, if you will, we are in the business of putting buyers and sellers together. Um, so the way that we interact and the way that we converse um, with our end consumer, if you will, which is the wholesale buyer and also um, the wholesale exhibitor. Um, it's a little bit different, right? Uh, we have a very robust social media campaign that we um, keep up. We also have the um, print catalogs that we have at our physical markets, right? So we have all of these different avenues, um, but the main uh, goal is to put together that buyer and seller, whether it be at one of our main marketplaces or at our day-to-day -day, uh, open daily business. I think that uh, one of the things that is heavily uh, 
leveraged by our retailers um, that come to shop the market in particular is our website um, used for research and discovery um, pre-market or pre-open uh, daily before they come. Uh, our online directory that features all of our brands um, so that you can really get a look for the breadth and depth of the products that you're going to be have available on each campus. Um, the use of our online floor plans for pre-market planning um, before visiting the showrooms, you know where they're located, which lines are in which showrooms, how to best navigate the buildings. Um, we also use um, it to promote uh, person uh, in person to person events or virtual events um, during market or pre market. Um, you can also find different products that are searchable by keyword, company name. And we are currently working on an extensive mobile app um, to enhance that in person market experience. And so more to come on that. But we're really trying to, to dig in and make sure that each of our retailers are having the smoothest possible experience while they're on site. Um, so that is really what is working uh, really well for us. Uh, definitely trying to use all of our different platforms, um, such as Instagram has been really uh, successful for us, you know, really trying to get people excited about what is happening at market. Um, you know, Omnichannel is wonderful, but as my retailers tell me day in and day out, there's just no substitute for being able to touch it, feel it, smell it, <laughs> et cetera, being at market. It. Um, so 100% really, right. Yeah, so getting people excited uh, via social media or via eblast about what is happening on campus, seeing people interact. Um, we use our eblast to promote certain uh, events or seminars that may be happening um, on campus as well. Um, so that's really uh, our strategy. Um, as Do far you find as that I'm sorry. No, you saying, do you do you see that um, people use different platforms or tools as you get closer pre-market, during market, and then post-market? Do they turn to different avenues for information as they go through that process? Um, I would say that Instagram is really something that people utilize during market. You will see um, our retailers even taking their customers like behind the scenes at market, helping them pick like, okay, do you like this product or do you like this product or this day is rug flipping day. So we're going to go and look at all of the different rugs and flip them over and hand pick which ones we're going to bring back to our store. So Instagram is really robust. Uh, during larger events. Uh, we're also seeing some success on YouTube, being able to um, converse our, our um, panels or our uh, seminars that we have uh, done at market and being able to blast those out as well. So we can see the traffic being picked up uh, post-show, like if they didn't have time to sit on that certain seminar, but they really wanted to, you know, really being able to interact with us after that as well. We found our YouTube channel to be profitable too. And it once, I think once the person, consumer or whatever, finds a channel with content he or she likes, they'll go back to it again and again mm -hmm. to see what's going on. We do a lot of silly videos and fun stuff. We see great traction. And every once in a while, we'll see a few people who discover us and then go back and watch stuff from three years ago. But again, That's the it's best all kind based. of engagement, right? But it has it. But our all of our videos are funny. They're amusing. We just gave a wonderful video about promoting banned books. I really think a lot of books should be banned. Algebra, all of them. <laughs> Let them go. Let's just let's ban some stuff that people really don't need. <laughs> we got a pretty good response to that. <laughs> I bet you did. That's a good list. Do you find? Um, do you? talk to different generations in different ways. You know, we know that younger consumers consume social media differently than other generations. Do you tailor your marketing to different generations or do you kind of put it in one uh, big pot? We tailor the product to different generations, but the marketing is pretty much the same across the board. It's just that different generations look at it on different platforms. Mm -hmm. um, our stuff kind of transcends age, except you know, our pants with elastic waistbands, that's pretty clear. But the, uh, <laughs> we show things, we look for our customers. 
our mission in life is to delight and amuse our customers, to find things that they will be happy with. And it, it's fascinating how people don't fully understand how important an independent retailer is to its customers. You're building a relationship because you're coming to us when you have a baby or when somebody has a baby and you're looking for a gift, when you're looking for a wedding gift and shopping with an indie retailer makes, I mean, it does, you can go to, I can't name any names that start with B, B and B. You can get a coffee pot there, but you're not going to leave saying I had such a good time shopping for that wedding gift. It doesn't ramp you up for the wedding. And that's part of what we can provide. So our social media and all the rest of it is on the same, same plane of, I don't care if you buy anything, you don't have to leave with a bag. You just have to leave with a big smile. I love that strategy. It makes a lot of sense. Thank you. It's very sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges or, or, or even just frustrations or irritations about, is it a totally seamless process or how, how have you overcome those um, hiccups? Who are you asking? We'll start with you, Mary Liz. Nothing is seamless. Every single piece <laughs> of this thing is frayed. It is full of pulls and tears and rips, but it only lasts for a minute, except for that YouTube channel, which lasts forever. But you just keep <laughs> pushing and you, you make notes and you figure out what got great interaction. Looking at the analytics on these things is fabulous because you get an idea of what people are enjoying, what they're responding to. And there's, we do a lot of special events. We've built our business on events. We have live music in the restaurant. We've got art fairs and fashion shows and all sorts of stuff. Our customers want to know when they're happening. We just discovered that we could ask them to reserve spaces at these events. Duh. We're finally doing that. <laughs> it's increased our interaction tremendously, helps us plan better. So we keep polishing it, but it's, it's like standing on the beach. Anything you do in social media, anything you do online. Yeah, it was great last week. It's all changing next week. Twitter's falling apart. You thought this worked, it's over. So part of it is just having fun with it, not taking it too seriously, even though it's a pretty essential part of our business. Good points, good points. You have to be flexible and, and able to pivot quickly, right? Exactly. Yeah, What's the I would last time you that. saw a post on MySpace? <laughs> good point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talk about a blast in the past. Yeah, I would speak in everything Mary Liz said and just kind of enjoying the process and, you know, trying to be on the forefront and so that you can be proactive to what the next big thing is or staying ahead of the algorithm on Instagram or whatnot. But I think at the end of the day, it's just kind of keeping it um, authentic and, you know, back to the basics, having everyone leave with this vow, right, Mary Liz? Like, whether and it's don't forget, you're going to make mistakes. You are going to screw it up totally. You're going to send big old bombs. It doesn't matter. You keep trying because if you don't have some flops, I tell our buyers this, if you don't buy some stuff that doesn't sell, you're not trying hard enough. We have to keep looking for something that's new and different and go out on a limb and hope that that limb doesn't crash and burn. But if it does, you just find another limb. Good point. Good point. Logan, any Anything extra to add? Um, I think these ladies said it very well. Uh, it definitely it takes uh, some trial and error for sure. But, but on our end of the business being so unique, it's very important for us to be able to get some, some assets from our tenants or even from our, our, our retail buyers, right? There are, it's very much the chicken and the egg situation over here. You know, the tenants want to be there if the buyers are there and the buyers want to be there if the tenants are there. So it's very... Um, a balancing act that we that we have to to create uh, but I would say uh, you know it's it's wonderful when we have those assets to be able to promote from both so like I said the retailers shopping and sharing while they're at market and uh, even the tenants giving us some of their assets for us to be able to promote because that's really what we want right we want to be able to showcase uh, the product and the beauty um, and the excitement um, that our business has to offer in order to to, to really meld those two worlds um, together. So if you had a wish list of uh, things that would make your job, do, doing that job easier, what would it be? What could people, what could your clients do to help you um, partner better? 
Right. Well, um, for my job in particular, I would say I'm always looking for feedback from my buyers. Um, you know, buyers are very busy. They're on the go. They have, they're running their businesses, right? So it's hard to get some face time with them. Uh, but, and I, it's completely understandable, but we would love to know, you know, what exactly would make your market with us more successful. So being the voice of the retailer, uh, specifically for home decor and furniture for the company, I need to know what it is you're experiencing at market market and what would make it easier for for us to help you do your job better. So unless they um, take a little bit of time and tell me that, unfortunately, I can't communicate it up. So that would be lovely. But also from our tenants, um, just those assets, you know, you work so hard on on doing your social media and your um, your your email blast and getting that beautiful photography of the things that that you sell. You know, we would love to to have access to those to be able to promote to our buyers and our retailers in order to get them there um, to market. So those are just a few things. I'm sure if I spoke with our marketing team, they would have a whole slew <laughs> of list of, of, of wishes. <laughs> Could I mention to the vendors out there that as a retailer with a website, a e-commerce enabled website, having assets, as we like to say, mm -hmm. um, having pictures of product is huge if we can go to your website and find the pictures of the stuff we want to put online and find a brief description of those products that means that we can put your product on our website as quickly as it comes in if we have to schedule a photo shoot and write about it ourselves it will slow the whole process down and then we think about what do we what what do we want to put on what don't we so having a fully stocked uh catalog of your products and descriptions, huge, enormously helpful to any retailer who's got a website. Well, Except ladies, I'm here in Connecticut. To do all of their own. I will, I'm here in some, like, some action items on my part. I want to make sure I'm making our photos and everything readily available for y'all. So keep, keep those suggestions coming. And we really appreciate it. That. They're very simple and clean and show only the product. And don't right. have a palm tree in the background or a puppy or anything else. I just want the goods. Simple, you just want the clear product and access to them so that I can build it into my site. Or I personally wouldn't be doing this, but I know people who can do it. And we would have that stuff up very, very quickly. And that's the hugest uh, thing to improve e commerce for independent retailers that our vendors can possibly do. And I think that's terrific advice. You know, we did have a, a photography webinar a few weeks ago, and that's available in our library about how to take better pictures, but whether you're the person taking the pictures or you have someone else taking them for you, it's good, good points to keep in mind, Mary Liz. I assume, do you, does it make a difference about orientation, vertical or horizontal? You know, the people who know how to do it know what it's supposed to be. No, I, I don't, do I don't know the parameters. We can take great pictures. We have professional photographers. We've got all that stuff, but if we don't have to do it, if we can just get your hat with a spinning propeller on our website right away, that makes all the difference. If I have to schedule the shoot and put it up, then we have to analyze what's worth it and what isn't. So Absolutely. it's, you know, we're juggling a lot of balls here. Yeah, yeah, anything to make the job easier. And the descriptions too, a lot of, a lot of I'm sorry, I'm just reiterating this. A lot of companies mm -hmm. will give us a good picture, no description. If we can have a short thing saying, this hat with propeller pushes away the flies, whatever. Just <laughs> something that we can either steal or reformat. It makes it an enormous difference to our team who's building that website. Good. good. Okay. Uh, so go ahead, Gerald. Oh, no, I was saying that's good to know on my end. So thank you for that. Both, both of y'all, thank you. So I think to summarize, um, we, we know it's very clear that it's best to have a consistent and clear message across all platforms and all ways that you reach your clients or your partners or your customers. Uh, it's important to try and fail better than to have not tried at all, to stay nimble and quick and just keep doing the next best thing and to be very clear with assets and to try to, um, uh, to uh, supply as many of them as possible. So are there any other tips or suggestions that we can 
um, offer? Well, from my point of view, do something silly and have a good time. Leave your customers laughing. Leave your customers and, laughing. And keep it and keep it going. Don't flood them. Don't drive them crazy. But let them hear from you once every week to 10 days, whatever your whatever the format is that works the best for you. Establish a schedule and follow it. Then at Christmas, if you've kept them amused all year and you're all of a sudden emailing them way too often, they'll forgive you. Maybe. <laughs> Very good. These advice. are priceless. <laughs> Very good advice. Okay. Well, I do not see any questions, but please, if you um, think of something later, you are very welcome, um, viewers, to email me. My address is azisco at bridgetowermedia.com, and I will be sure to get back to you. Um, other than that, Logan, Gerald, Mary Liz, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, viewers, for joining us. And um, I wish you all a very happy, a happy week. Take care.